Man, know thyself, and thou shalt know the universe and God. Hi there, welcome back. As we touched upon in lesson one, the world right now is in an incredibly disharmonic state. A few people mentioned that we've always been disharmonic, and this is true. In fact, we've been growing more and more disharmonic for about 13,000 years now. It's in our DNA, and it's something that we're passing through as a species. We're at the end of it though, and we will never be here again. We're just not in tune with ourselves, and mass consciousness is beginning to realize it. The reason for this, however, is not because of bad politics or greed in business. Those are simply long-term manifestations of the real problem, which lies on a much more individual level. The true problem is in our old way of thinking, creating tension on every level. This will become more apparent as the lessons go on. We're going through something of a shift right now into a completely new state of being, with a new way of thinking and a different understanding of the one reality. In today's lesson, I'm going to talk about chakras and how you can become more in tune with yourself and those around you on multiple levels. Now, for us to even start to understand chakras, first we have to understand the basics of light and color. If you take pure light and shine it through a prism, the light will break into a spectrum of seven colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. We familiarly recognize this as the spectrum of the rainbow, or even more familiar, the basic palette in Photoshop. This spectrum as we know it is the foundation of every visible color. What you might not know about color is that each color has its own vibration. Red has the longest wavelength and the slowest vibration frequency. We recognize this as warm and stimulating. Violet has the shortest wavelength and the fastest frequency, and we recognize it as cool and calming. I don't think I have to describe what happens between these two colors, it's just a frequency change. This basic knowledge, believe it or not, is very important, but we're gonna have to look at some other stuff first. Now, in modern science, we've learned that certain colors can stimulate mental activity, and other colors can calm the mind. We know that we need light energy for nourishing our brain, emotion, physical body, and perhaps more importantly, our chakras. So, what is a chakra? The word chakra comes from the Sanskrit word meaning wheel. A chakra is a wheel-like vortex spinning in a circular motion within the body. This forms a vacuum in the center that draws in energy on a vibratory level. It can draw in anything from color vibration to microwaves to energy and emotions of people that we come into contact with. This works in tandem with the thought realm that we discussed last week as thoughts are on a vibratory level. Right, so chakras are energy points that run vertically from the top of your head down your spine. Depending on how you look at it, there are seven, eight, or 13 primary chakras, as well as over hundreds of smaller, less important ones that are just scattered around the body. I'm going to cover the eight and 13 later on, so for now, let's just stick with the basic seven. Your chakras are kind of like the etheric motor of the soul. Not only do chakras draw in energy, each and every chakra radiates an energy of vibration and govern over a major organ or gland connected to other body parts that resonate of the same frequency. To have balanced and aligned chakras will make you happier, healthier, and more in tune with yourself. When one chakra center is out of sync, it may eventually affect the organs and glands that it's connected to and cause chakras neighboring them to also go out of sync causing like a chain reaction and many bodily imbalances. A chakra can become out of balance when it is overactive, underactive, or possibly congested or blocked. This is almost always felt on a mental, emotional, or physical level. The benefits to energizing your chakras and learning about them are primarily for a harmony of mind, body, and spirit. Your mind alone cannot nurture your whole being, nor can a proper food diet solve all of your problems. It is through your chakras that you can learn to balance all of you, bringing you into a healthier state of consciousness. As I mentioned before, each chakra is connected to an organ or gland, which governs over a section of the body. The order of the chakras actually go from the bottom up, starting with red, and changing vibrations in each chakra until you get to violet. Before we go any further, think about this. When you break light apart, you get seven colors. These are the same seven colors that our physical body is tethered to. What would you see if you were to look at a human through an etheric prism? Are we beings of light? Think about it. Now, not only does each chakra connect to an organ or gland, but each chakra also has a very specific trait. The first chakra is survival and is connected to the adrenal gland. The next one is sex or interaction, which is connected to the gonad. The third is power or ego and is connected to the pancreas. The fourth is love and connects to the thymus. The fifth is expression and connects to the thyroid. The sixth is the third eye, which is psychic and intuitive and connects to the pituitary gland. Finally is the crown chakra, which is the spiritual chakra and connects to the pineal gland. Survival, sex, power, love, expression, intuition, spiritual. These are the seven traits through which we grow and are at the core of our being. Do you know of a time when you were struggling with your ego or didn't seem to have a heart or couldn't express yourself? If you or anyone you know have a problem or come off too strong in any of these traits, 
The reason why is because of an imbalance within the chakras. Okay, so we know what chakras are now, yet we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of this topic. For the remainder of this lesson, I wanna talk about methods of opening, activating, and charging your chakras. I feel like it will be more beneficial to you at this point. As we know, each chakra resonates to a color that we just discussed. Doing things like wearing clothing that matches the color of a chakra will cause it to resonate. I remember when I first learned about this, all of my chakras were closed except for my throat, which was way too open. The reason for this was because my bedroom was painted blue as well as my bed sheets were blue, and every night I would get a chakra boost in that one area. Sunlight is our main source and provider of light, heat, and energy. Sunlight itself consists of energies in the form of cosmic rays, gamma rays, x-rays, visible light rays, infrared rays, microwaves, and even radio waves. Lying in the sun for half an hour can give you a powerful energy boost. Eating food that matches the chakra colors are good as well. Eating red tomatoes and apples are good for the root chakra. Eating greens are good for the heart. Does this make you want to eat healthier? Color baths are a really relaxing way to open a chakra. You can get this organic fluid that you put in your bath, which changes the color of the bath. You can just lay back and relax and get an energy boost from the water itself. Finally, and this is the best way to open your chakras hands down, go get Reiki. I kid you not, it is the equivalent of spiritual surgery. You lie down and become super relaxed. A Reiki master will then individually go over all of your chakras, opening the ones that are closed and aligning them. See, Reiki masters are people who have had spiritual training on seeing your chakras. Yeah, they can actually see them through the third eye. They learn to move energy throughout their body and connect it and flow it into yours. It's a very amazing process. You may have to ask, but Reiki masters can also typically communicate to your higher self for you and ask you what you need to progress in your path. Reiki itself is growing more and more popular in the last 15 years, so it shouldn't be very hard to find a number of places near you that have it. If you're serious about this and you don't know where to start, Reiki is an excellent first step. Medical science has proven that toxins and impurities, including negative thoughts, chemicals in our food, and other pollutants can influence the body. If these are consistent, chakra imbalances can manifest, which may eventually affect us on a mental and physical levels. Traditional healthcare at this time is unable to naturally or totally alleviate symptoms or cure all of our problems. This means it is up to us to improve our health conditions. We cannot forget about our whole being. In today's society, we put way too much emphasis on independence and not enough on interdependence. Our chakras are interdependent of each other, and we need to take care of all of them to take care of our whole. And that's basics of chakras. Believe it or not, we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of this incredible and complex topic. Chakras 2 will be a few weeks away though. Next week, we're gonna look at indigo children and super psychics. See you next week, and so it is. The